Sí, sí, está bien, está bien. We down here with the champion in Miami Beach in the 305. That's a USA champion right here. So y'all know here, y'all don't know nobody. That's the best. Y'all better know who they is. Real, baby. Who up next? Who up next? Nate Diaz. Over. First round, second round. What's first round. First round, knockout. First round. Knockout. First round. UFC, baby. <laughs> UFC right there, baby. UFC. UFC, baby. And I'm just chilling casually at another fight show. And this great competitor by the name of Nate Diaz calls me out. With this belt, I want to defend it against uh, Jorge Masvidal. Had a good last fight. So, but there ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? That'll be a fantastic fight. We're making the biggest fight of the year, the biggest fight in, in quite some time, the way that we're moving the needle. And it's not because we're the most charismatic people or I don't know what. I think it's just because we're gonna fight and people know that. It's just gonna be two guys testing each other's souls to the max. We've both been in those trenches, those, those uh, fights that are tough, and we pull out with victories. But we know how to dig, and people love to see that. Guys that get pushed through the fucking pain, fatigue, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him my best effort to do what I've always done, and that's go for the off button. You know, I just wanna make sure I win this one in an impressive fashion. I used to be at 155 pounds, and Nate was in the division, and he was ranked. So uh, I always kept my eye on him just in case we were gonna ever compete or something, you know. And I knew I had seen his brother too; he had fought in shows with me, strike force and Nate Diaz. So I knew the Diaz brothers. I had also fought Gilbert Melendez, and I know they all trained together, you know. Those guys were on top of the sport forever at a long time, you know. Of course, I had my eye on them. I knew about their techniques, how they're training, uh, the great gas tanks that they bring into the scrap, you know. You gotta be aware of everybody. Once somebody's in the top 10 at my weight class, I'm very aware of them. Main event, UFC 244 in New York, November 2nd, Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal. It's a fight that a lot of people want to see. It seems to me uh, that Nate Diaz in some ways is a more difficult fight than Conor McGregor. If we're comparing um, them to each other, I thought Nate won both fights. First one was clear, he tapped him. The second one, it was a decision. I thought I thought he won it as well. I was there live. I felt Nate won that decision. You respect Nate, right? Because because oh, he's been in the game uh, for, you know, the tons same way you have been. Tons of respect. You never know allegations of steroids. Um, dude comes to fight, man. He's he's gotten outpointed before in the past, but his, his will's never been in question. He's never given up in a fight or took in a step back, you know? So those type of fights, man, it's like you feel alive. You wake up a little bit earlier. You go to sleep a little bit earlier, you eat what's right, because on the other side, I have somebody that, that wants to take my soul, that wants to murder me, wants to embarrass me. I'm not going to let that happen. Nobody's taking my lunch money, so... Fight day, the, the walkout ceremony is easy, bro. If you're walking out, fight day. Yeah, you gotta, gotta walk out. You gotta, 
I'm sorry. You gotta be ready for fight it. Fight and then is listen, afterwards, I'll get, afterwards, if you want a rematch with me, gotcha. yeah, yeah. right on the fucking octagon, bro. <laughs> fight, listen, Stu, fight, fight day is a different type of intensity. Right, I know. It's, 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 it's completely like, different. Hey, I want to see him like that. Oh, I want to see him like that. Mike, you're, you're waiting for a second, though. Did you get all the food you needed? Did you, oh, did you get all the food you needed? Did you get all the food you needed? Nutritional meal? This is right around the strictest time of the diet. I'm like six weeks out, so we gotta make sure we get the right protein going in the body. I know some of you are thinking, but what about the bread and chicken match for it all? Let me tell you about the bread and chicken. It's longer, lures, and steam, fuel, and stuff because the carbohydrate is harder to decompose in the body, so it stays running longer. It's like diesel instead of gasoline. Try it. Oh, we've got a bad boy fighter from the streets of Miami with us. Uh, I was talking about my father and also Jorge Masvidal is with us today as well. Let's check out the way that he came into the national consciousness right here last time he fought. That's faster than it's ever happened before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now he fights Nate Diaz. That was super necessary right there. <laughs> November 2nd, ESPN Plus against Nate Diaz. Are you intrigued? You must be intrigued, right? Obviously. Too much violence for me. I'm oh, <laughs> Bobby, are you intrigued? Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, I'm intrigued. Are you kidding me? Diaz is going to have his work cut out for him. That's right. I bet you that he's going to last longer because he's going to start running around that ring, buddy. <laughs> he's going to knock There's no the way this something is going to happen to him. five seconds longer because he'll be running in fear. Great job, Jorge. That was a hell of a season of segment, you know what I mean? You got to come here more often to do it again. Give me five. Ah! Oh, I will feel no, Bobby! Strength and conditioning, technique, and uh, more strength and conditioning after that technique, like specific. Working with my boy Johnny Evans today. Good wrestler from the zoo, working his way through the MMA world. Gonna be a stud, keep your eye out for him. A lot of people already know him, actually. Jesus Gallo, everybody fucking knows him because he's a camera whore. Damn. This is no bigger camera whore than this guy right here. I knew since an early age fighting was was it for me. It was the only thing I did. I never really played sports. I, I didn't do anything else other than fighting. It's like the age of four or five years old I was fascinated by it. If there was a kung fu movie on, my dad knew that I could stand still for maybe like an hour and a half when it was impossible to get me to stand still. My dad knew that I had like an insaneness with the kung fu movies. So he knew more or less something in my mind had already pick that route, you know? So I seem like quick and, and talented and explosive for some things, but for like other sports, it's not even there, you know? I don't I don't have that coordination. I didn't develop it either as a kid, so just, I love to compete. My first fight, I don't know anything of it. I don't have no memories of it, but it's my dad and it's one of his proudest stories that he has of mine. He says some kid took my building block from me in the pre-grades, uh, I was like four years old, and I executed, he says, on sight. So he couldn't have been prouder. None of his fight, my pro fights, has, has made him prouder than that day, he says. That uh, he knew that he didn't have to worry about me, that I'd always be good because I took care of myself. And um, not that he wasn't going to take care of me, but just like, like the, the sense of proudness of a parent, you know, like, oh, this one's good, he knows what to do. So I say since four years old, I've been scrapping. I have no memories of it, but that's what my dad says. 34. 
Judo Olympian over here. How old is this guy? 22. 22, man. Thank you, Pops. That's your Bobby. Khalifa. Um, I was training at the same gym as uh as Kimbo. That's it. It can't be over. He had got in contact with us and they told me, hey, you uh, want to scrap? I was like, hell yeah. But they gave me a call again. And like, hey, you still want to scrap? I was like, yeah, we'll be getting in contact with you soon. You know, it was very uh, underground. Not, not too many people could know because it wasn't, it was in the early stages. So, like, these events weren't cool, you know? It was very hush hush. As you know, we always keep this thing on the DL. You know what I'm saying? This, this is strictly underground access here, okay? I get the call maybe like, I don't remember, like a week from that day. Literally, as I was uh, about to place my order at McDonald's. Uh, McFlurry, M&M, the double cheeseburger okay. with large fries. Okay. And let me get a McDouble. Okay. With a mac chicken. And they're like, hey, you want to fight today? I was like, hell yeah, damn right. Let's let's do it, you know. And he just got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> You get like butterflies and jittery, you know, because you don't know if somebody's gonna do something stupid related with the posse. But the fight itself, no. I mean, it's just, I've been in so many at that point already that I was just like, Weep, let's go. Like I said, it was like uh, people play basketball and you're chilling that's a you know safe zone. As weird as it sounds. That was my safe zone, fighting. Weird, right? La primera cosa es el dedo en el ojo. Ah, ¿en serio? Sí, la primera. Va. Ah, me está mirando mal. Ah, bueno, sí, muy bien, pero claro, defensa personal donde se ¿Ah? eh. <risa> Arrancaron Gabriel de Superman. Y este lunes va a arrancar la tercera temporada de Exatron en Estados Unidos. Esto es una abreboca. El Exatron VIP de la primera temporada recién acaba de propinar el knockout más rápido en la historia del UFC y lo dijo cuando concluyó la primera temporada. Me llevo de Jorge Mavidal. Exatron was amazing. For starters, what you got to see on TV was me with, with a lot of good athletes. So we got the mix, you know, with uh, Olympian gymnasts, the guy that took silver medal for running the mile was on my team. His name is Luis Manzano, man. Like, how, much, how crazy in shape is this individual? Took a silver medal for the mile. Everybody runs a mile. You know that guy's fast. So I got to pick a lot of brains, see how they structure training sessions, things like that, you know. And the, on the female side, there's a world champion boxer. There's a Cheli Cantu that's an Olympic gymnast as well. So I got a lot of brain picking to do a lot of that. And then we compete as well. So I'd see how they move compared to mine. 
things like this, you know. So it was awesome in that sense. Me gusta caminar en la playa, comer chocolate, se cocinar, bailar. So, tenganlo en mente. For sure, the courses were pretty dope. Some of them, and there's a lot of free range while you're running full speed through an obstacle. Para Cambridge. Para el escalador mexicano con todo. Van los dos tropezó Adrián tiene que volver al inicio y esto lo puede aprovechar Jorge. And I really, really, really like that. I'm building a couple courses in my backyard and mainly because I, I saw how much agility, mobility, and even a different type of endurance this gave me. So I like this so much. I'm building, I'm getting one built out. I'm gonna do it much like how they had it over there, but just 10 times harder on their body, you know, just conditioning wise and, and the exercises that I'm gonna have set up and then like the distances and how I'll be doing it. But it's gonna be a lot of that running through a place. So in essence, it's like a, a parkour, but safer, you know? I don't want to be out in the streets doing backflips and fucking mess up the neck and then I'm in a fucking wheelchair and I can't fight and that'll suck. So the living conditions, if you were winning, were amazing. If you were losing, they sucked because that's how they did it in, in the earlier seasons. We were sleeping on the cabin with no AC in the middle of summer on the floor with some plywood and sheets they wouldn't give you a pillow and the food was also more scarce if you lost but we signed up for that you know which i thought i'd be amazing for me i'm like man i'm gonna get paid to like cut weight because even if we lose they're not gonna feed me i need to lose weight anyways so for me it was like a win-win in all situations and mentally i was fine over there i was like chilling man a lot of people were suffering i'm used to cutting weight i'm used to maybe sleeping somewhere uncomfortable so i had a blast over there it was one of the best experiences of my life <laughs> I got to spend a lot of alone time, which was the best thing about the show. And that was probably like my favorite thing because I could just get lost, go to the jungle. Not everybody was into five hour hikes. And since I have a tremendous amount of energy and we really didn't have much to do, I would go on like four or five hour hikes every day or just get lost. No phone, no nothing, just chilling. And in that process, I, uh, I got to hear that voice inside of me a little bit better. So I thank God for that opportunity of allowing that to line up. Jorge, este, si hay algo que yo aprendí de ti en estos tres meses fue ser perseverante. Este, y pues obviamente este, el premio jocoso es para el gambler, el, el apostador, para todo tener una apuesta. Just got off the reality show, I'm itching to fight. Can't get a fight. Thank goodness, uh, Till couldn't get a dance partner. My ranking wasn't that high at the time, and Till's was, you know. And Till could have been like, nah, I don't want to fight this dude. A million reasons, you know. Uh, but I know he had a couple opponents back out already. We had two or three, so I know he also wanted to scrap and somebody that would for sure show up to fight. And though I didn't have that high of a ranking, I think he, he knew that for a fact, we were gonna sell the place out, because people know I come to fight, and he comes to fight, so what are you gonna get? A fucking fight. Oh, he, he took on the challenge, and thank goodness uh, we got to do that, man. I got to show a little bit more of myself to the world of what I could do. And uh, I love going into enemy territory. My my home is the road. It's not like I've always fought at the same place, like in back in my hometown or something that I would call home. No, for me, home is the road anywhere. Asia, England, Russia, South America, Central America, all these places I've, I've fought in, competed in Japan as well. I love, I love Japan, but does Japan love me? Thank you, Japan. that whole crowd with him and and just to silence everybody it's uh it's a special feeling i like that i like that i, I take all the energy from the room quick 
feel it. Oh, it's unexplainable unless you've done it. Then you're like, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Forcing Darren Till to reconsider when he lunges in with that left hand. Because yeah, he goes to that so often. That's such his power shot. Great fight ended up being fight of the night, and I got another bonus on top of that, so it was a great night, you know. And we're chilling, and um, people are already calling me out left and right. All these little groupies that are in love with me, my phone's blowing off the hook. So and so this, so and so that. I can care less. I'm in vacation, and my manager is reaching out to the UFC, and they put a couple deals in front of us. And the most enticing deal ends up being this guy that's calling me out. Actually, he he wants this, you know, because I kind of feel like a bully after what I did to him, but whatever. Yo, George, I think I might have not said this in a language that you understand. Tell the people, are you scared? He doesn't want to fight me because he's scared. This guy by the name of Ben Askren calls me out and keeps wanting the scraps. We're like, all right, we'll do it. Let's do it. You know, it's guaranteeing me certain things. I'm going to fight for a title my next fight and things like that, you know. Plus, he's undefeated and all this goodness is saying about him. You know, he thought I was ducking him because he's a tough fight. Nah, I just wanted the toughest fight at the moment. I didn't think it was him, you know. Whatever, you know. Answer all them. Why you so mad? Why you so mad, bro? Why you mad, bro? After that, chaos, obviously. My name is Charlie Decker. Um, they call me the Bull. Uh, I'm George's uh, co-worker. You know what I'm saying? He likes to punch me in the face every once in a while. You know when I get out of line. Um, and I love to fight, man. That's what I do. I met George over here through uh, through his coach, Paulino Hernandez. He came out to one of my fights and he saw that I uh, I whipped up on some uh, some rival fighters from another gym and uh, he ended up taking me under his wing ever since. The training camp, I can't give you any details. There's a bunch of secrets, you know, that we can't let out. Uh, but uh, he's gonna knock Nate's chin off, man, uh, just like he did too, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna take him out in the first round. He's gonna throw the kitchen sink in your face. Jesus the Creature Gallo. Uh, blessed by Juanqui with the name. Gallo has been part of the team for a damn long time. This Paulino's in charge of getting the weapons ready, sharpening them up. Gallo's main thing is to put gasoline in the car and make sure that the car is functioning. He's been taking care of my body. I've never had no major surgeries, nothing crazy, and a big part of it is to do with Gallo. He knows how to rev my engines up high, and he knows when to bring them down low. He knows when to put it in cruise control. Then, hey, today we're going with everything we got. I just rely on him. I just show up. I don't think, I don't really ask. What are we going to do? Okay, let's go. And we just get it done. such an instrumental force in the corner, you know? He's one of the guys solely in charge for the gasoline that goes in this vehicle. I 
I never truly released this info. It wasn't the biggest paycheck I made. It was just like that, uh, that man, maybe I, I, I can go far in this thing. Uh, a fight that I was scared. The only fight that I've been scared going into. This was such a, a milestone in my career. Like when I would go back, I, I think about this moment propelling me to the next. And that's because of the tremendous amount of respect that I had from this individual, and that's Eve Edwards. Just stands right back up. Eve Edwards, he going back to the early days of his career where he would actually knee people's teeth out. He was called the dentist at one time, but now he's looking to do the same to George Masvidal. I was a little nervous going to that fight. I was scared, you know, all the guys that I fought in my career, that was the guy that was giving me the butterflies, and I was like, fuck, man. I seen what he done to people. You know, he's a vicious individual, and, and he was like very bad style for me in many ways, you know. Eves Edwards from Conroe, Texas, by way of Nassau in the Bahamas. He comes in here with a lot That's of experience, 31, 12, and 1. Then I trained myself like a madman at the time. I just kept running myself into the ground because I didn't want to get my face to get rearranged by this individual. And I had a lot of respect. I'd seen him growing up fighting, and then I got the call that I was going to fight this guy. And it was almost a little bit surreal. You know, that, that's how it happened, kind of happened rather quick. Masvidal, a former street thug who's, you know, a guy, as much of a character is, he's supposedly a bad character, but he's a great character to be around. Can't catch him. High kick, block, by Trent in uh, Trent, New Jersey. He fights. This kid's a terrific fighter. He let too many more of those land. Fast, he's very quick, very sudden. He came. However, I give the power edge to Masvidal. And all. Masvidal is showing no respect to striking in with Edwards at all, but Edwards, Taking that as an affront, and we definitely have a couple of guys that both want to assert their dominance on the feet. All the striking game so far, both the hands and the feet. Nice combination. Masvidal goes to that lead, and right back, and Zeb was thrown in combination. So that fight made me sink down on my mouthpiece, give everything I had in that training camp, and out of that training camp came a better athlete than when I entered, a stronger mind. Yeah, Eve, the technically superior stand-up fighter, but the thing about Jorge is when you hit him, it just makes him mad. So Eve, maybe brought up the points, but now you see Jorge just waiting in with a brutal right-legged body kick. This is definitely a fight where nobody has clearly pulled ahead up to this point. You know, Masvidal's in Florida, and he talked about his improvement, but that time he took one right in the chest. A brutal knee to the chest. Yeah, well, even though we see some growth, here we see. That's what's known as the power of the whole time, and it definitely worked. The win or the loss didn't matter, but what matters is that how hard I had pushed myself in that camp to fight this individual. You know, how much preparation, how much dedication, how much discipline that I didn't know I had inside of me until I had the right opponent face in front of me that I know that it, it, if I made a mistake, it could be good night, you know. We'll see how serious it is. That's everyone's face you. Masvidal with his back to you. Masvidal in white in the black trunks is Edward. And even though he's a young man, you see the seasoning of Edwards waiting until he saw right, the right opening to go over the a horrendous flurry of strikes. I can see Edwards landing more with the, with the technically more precise strikes, but Masvidal possibly doing more damage most of the time. He's a bigger, stronger guy. That fight right there put a lot of things into perspective. Win or lose, that fight is what, what got me here, you know? The amount of torture that I was able to take in the camp and just keep getting better and getting better and getting better. And knowing that I had those extra, extra gears in, in my body, you know? That I just had to put my mind in the right thing. Just think high enough, hard enough, and I could get my body through it. So that fight was the very impactful in the game bird career. Penal. <laughs> we, yeah. No, they didn't think they were sitting on the sofa, but they are.
Oh, uh, well, I would have seen you. The hardest job in the motherfucking all the sports. Being the mimicking partner. He can do it all better than anybody. Paulino Hernandez is the most influential, inspirational piece of my whole game. My whole stand-up game revolves around this person that's added weapons to my arsenal. He tells me we need to add this and I sharpen it. So, you know, I have a lot of creativity when I'm in there, but the weaponry is mainly brought from this one individual. So he, he like makes the pieces for me to go to battle. I've known him forever. We've had an amazing journey together. He's been with me when I was nobody, absolutely. Before I was in the street fighting and people had seen me on YouTube and maybe you could say, oh, this guy's got talent. He had already started talking to me like, hey, if you, if you leave all this crap aside, all this uh, petty stuff, fighting in the streets and things like that, I could take you to the next level. You could take yourself to the next level. You got a lot of potential in you. And on the day that he told me was a very, um, was a very impactful day of my life. It was a very chaotic day, you know? A lot of craziness was ha were happening. So when he told me this on that day, everything clicked and I clipped a lot of things from my life. I stopped doing things a certain way and I got on a better path. You know, I started pointing towards the direction that I should have been going in. <laughs> And since then, we've had the journey. We've been inseparable. He's always been in my fights. We're always up and down together. That's my, that's my father from the sports side of uh, training. And I wouldn't compete if it wasn't for him. You know. So I was at the gym, I was pretty good. I had natural hand speed. I just relied on my boxing and I would, I would get worked a lot in the beginning. My legs would get destroyed, oh, pain, pain. And it showed me how to tolerate pain as well, you know, cause I, I just learned bad. And the guys knew that I was good at boxing, so they were chopping right away. And one day, Paulino, which he had been inactive for like seven years, and got to Miami and started training again out of nowhere. They asked me to spar with him. By this time already, I was maybe kickboxing for like a year or two. So I thought I was pretty damn good, you know? And I'm hearing about this older dude that is a stud, which is him, but he hasn't competed like in seven years. And he's also like in his thirties, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm gonna take it easy on this guy. Cause I'm not gonna hurt this old dude. <laughs> Man. <laughs> was it not even close. He whooped my ass so bad. And I wasn't, at first I was like started out mad slow and so did he. And then he um, started picking it up. I was like, oh, this guy's actually pretty damn good. So I started picking it up. And then I picked it up a little bit too much and he just <sighs> played with me, just embarrassed me. I felt like crap that day. And this dude, after I was sitting down, taking my gloves off, the hand wraps off, came over and put his hand on my shoulder. He's like, hey man, you're pretty good, bro. You have, uh, you have potential in here, stick with it. And then walked out. I couldn't believe that this guy was so fucking humble too. I was like, wow, this guy just whooped my ass and did that. Shortly after that, we started training. He started showing me the tools and stuff that it took to get to that level. And just another story that made our, our journey, like, I don't know, fucking stick like glue and shit. Get this shit pop. Let's go. Like no, these guys should no introduction needed because everybody knows who this is. These guys should the be ready. The GM of America to go. top team. Music's ready. Ice got the thing going. Charlie's blasting double bicep poses. We're all ready. Let's get it. Georgie's wearing the too tight shorts from 1972. Studio 54 shorts. My favorite part about training when I was a kid was just being in that atmosphere. Not to get all religious and stuff, but it's just something since I stepped into the gym, I just felt right. I didn't know what was gonna entail, what was gonna happen next, what what drills I have, the teachers would have us do, but that atmosphere, you know, of being in gyms and being in a boxing gym and a wrestling gym where there's not, you're not really talking too much, you're not really, hey, whole really excited to see each other, you're just getting to work, you're getting a task done. And since it's the first time I stepped on a wrestling mat or the first time I walked into an actual boxing gym, boxing gym, it just absorbed me. It was just like, whoa, I, different. Like my sixth sense kicked in and told me this is where you belong. This is where you need to be at. Because you can be on your toes. I'll do one, I'll do here, I'll do, you know, like, 
I want kind of forward pressure. This kind of hold, this holds me up. And I'll, all right? If you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now punch with one, hold the other. Right? That's what I'll do, right? Let's say he gets double under somehow. Right? You gotta keep your elbows back, always like back, right? Because he's trying to go, he's trying to go out that side, right? So you just gotta make a stalemate. We got the great Mike Brown. Not only is he a world champion himself in fighting, but he's one of the best coaches ever. His mind is so detailed. I think what makes him so great is that uh, he's able to explain technique in a way that somebody very smart, very dumb, or in between can get the content that is given to him. Truly a connoisseur of the sport, he watches so many fights on the regular. His mind is, is so out there. Besides the fact that he himself was good at it, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be good at giving out that information. His legacy is gonna be one of the greatest. Since he's been head coach at ATT, I mean, the stars have just aligned and he's shown the world what he has. And this is the early part of his coaching. He'll eventually, just like in fighting, we hit another level of fighting, he's gonna hit another level of coaching. And it's gonna be ridiculous, I think, man. He's gonna be one of the greatest coaches that walked the earth. So since a kid going to these places, I, I would love it, you know? Especially on like a rough, rough day, or those, those rough days that we all have that you're just like, man, F the world, you know, and, and you're freaking going crazy. Maybe you want to pull like a crazy stunt or something. I'd go to the gym and, and find my safety. I'd, I'd find that I could forget about all those problems. And then a lot of times I'd be able to fix those problems. After three, four hours in the gym, I'd come down, my anxiety was gone, my, my head was at a better place. And since a kid, I started discovering like, if I have a bad day, I just gotta go to the gym more. So I would go to the gym and whatever the task was, because it, it's not always um, it's not always fun at the gym, you know? A lot of times you get your butt kicked. Me, for example, I've gotten my butt kicked thousands of times at the gym. It didn't matter though, I was, I was in my happy place. I'm upset about my performance, I'm upset with myself, but I'm not upset to the point where like, oh, I had a bad day in the gym. I always grow from those bad experiences. We getting ready to do this rematch here, right? We got ponytail and wave. This thing about to be real serious. Yeah, as you know, we always keep this thing on the DL. You know what I'm saying? This, this is strictly underground access here, okay? This the rematch. On the rematch with my boy Ray, and I say my boy because that's one of the coolest dudes ever, we we threw down on those scraps like dogs, like fucking animals, and there was nothing but love both times, the first and the second time. And I respect that because Ray knows the journey. Ray knows we're, we're fighting, competing, because we both love to do it. But it's no, it's no drama, it's none of that BS when we're done. We're not little boys, we're men. 
and we could look across from each other and respect each other and it was a genuine thing. And since then, I've always been cool with Ray. We've ran into each other numerous places and there's always nothing but love. The dude's a fucking warrior, man. Ended up being one of my toughest fights and I didn't even know, I just stopped, man, another street fight. It was a soul searching moment. It was tough. It wasn't easy. You know, there's no time limits on that. So we're just going, going and going. And though I was landing more shots, his shots were a little heavier than mine, especially back then at that time. You know, I just, I feel like I'd hit him with like three, four shots and he'd get me one good one. And like my whole foundation would get stirred up. And I mean, damn, I hit Ray with everything on the second one to the body. And sometimes it felt like he wasn't feeling those body shots. He was in much better shape to the body than he was on the first one. On the second one, a lot of those body shots, he was walking through them, you know? It plays tricks with your mind, man. You gotta keep that poker face on. You hit somebody with everything you got and they just smile and they go, come on. <laughs> like that, you gotta be able to do it right back. Like, all right, let's go then. Let's find out really who's made out of what. When he dropped me, oh Lord have mercy, my fucking head was spinning. When I got up to my feet, my head was still spinning and this fucking gorilla was coming at me. Right now, no mercy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, shit, I had to move my legs and I had to, I had to bring out that, that, oh, that thing that's inside of all of us when you really want something, when you're like, nah, it's not happening, man. You gotta kill me if you want this victory. And it just came out of me and, and I was able to, to get the, the, the victory, thank God, you know? So that rematch was was tough, but it let the world know who you had in here, you know. Let me let me take this time to give a shout out to all my real friends, because now everybody and their mother says, I've been watching you since the backyard days. That's bullshit, because I would have been rich a long time ago. I want to give a thanks to those that have been watching me since the AFC days, since I was in Japan kicking ass, since I was in Strike Force kicking ass. What's up, man? Everybody else coming up to me, telling me I, you know me since the back of your days, don't do that. Because if you were, I would have been famous a long time ago. I've been rich a long time ago, man. So shout out to everybody who's been backing me up. They saw me in those backyard fights and said, he's not a world champion now, but he can be, he will be. That's a dog right there. All you need to do is polish that dog up and then sick, sick him on the world and that guy's gonna do great things, you know? So thank you to all the real supporters, man. I'll take this time right here, right now. Gracias, mis hermanos y hermanas, a mi comunidad latina que está ahí desde el primer día. Gracias. Si no fuera por ustedes, no estuviera aquí yo ahora mismo en este momento. Gracias.
camp for Diaz has been, it's been a little grueling, you know, because I know my, my opponent is a dog. I know he's got a gas tank, so we got to better our gas tank. We got to sharpen our tools, and all that takes gas, takes preparation, going into the gym, out of the gym, into the gym, making everything run like clockwork. So we've been pretty strict on the Diaz camp, shut a lot of things down. There were distractions, you know, they were they're just part of the regular job, but we consider them distractions, so shut them down. Lockdown. Dark 030. Why? Because that's what it takes, you know? That's what it takes for an individual like Diaz. isolation just training getting ready to compete against somebody that, that wants to take my head off wants to choke me out at all costs wants to punch my fucking teeth in I gotta be ready man this guy's a warrior man he doesn't have the fame because he's a talker he has a fame because he's a scrapper man and those are the, the thrills those are the moments that I, that I live for that I look up at that tall mountain and I go I'm gonna get it done I'm gonna, no matter how long it takes I'm gonna get to that peak that's what I'm gonna do I just can't wait November 2nd I need to show the world a little bit more about myself Now as an adult, I see the pros of it, you know, of me going to the gym, staying in the gym, how, how much good it is for my health is an overall, not just for me, but for anybody just to stay active, to sharpen my tools, whether it be weightlifting, sprinting, wrestling, whatever the, the task may be, you got to push it with everything you have. So, you know, there's some times where your coaches have to push you to get to the next level and to get to that next level, you have to break down, you have to kill your old self and better yourself and to do that it's a process and if you got somebody that, that's game that's tough to break that person down it takes a lot to, to get to the next level so the thing is that if I use step to the side, don't, don't risk it, get knocked out. Or hold your ground and throw an overhand. You know what I'm saying? Step in, throw overhand. Boom. Step, step, to the step side in overhand. and throw overhand, head off center. Step to the side overhand. Hey, you can't, you can't try and sit there and then you're eat that shit. Get your ass knocked out. The fight clock is brought to you by Mongo. Oh. But the thing is, you see Artem, you see Artem, uh, Artem Levin? Kickboxer, he be, he be doing this. Boom, you back it up, you go like this, uh, throw, you know what I'm saying? Ask my boss, my boss is going, he's throwing fine knees everywhere, dog. Different, different, different tempos and the switch. Get out the train track. Right hands, hands and ground pound, just try to grapple, try to ground the pound. Touch, touch it, touch it. We're about to uh, play some handball. I usually spank up all these dudes here, Cuban or whatever ethnicity they think they are. This hand right here, it's a pip hand. You ever see how high? Wakata. Give me the powder. I'm gonna get the powder for you. Wait till you see his hand. I 
Are we ready or what? Me here. Yeah, I'll go last camp. Last camp. <laughs> Don't break nothing. You crack my back. Until fucking. Are you talking? No. And I was like, you didn't make it. Come on, bitch. Come on. 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 Put money on it. Cuban juicing while all these other athletes Chemical. are doing another type of juice. This is a Cuban chemistry juicing, baby. Nothing but that natural shit, huh? Oh, look at this shit. That's why I got so much hate going around. They can't believe I've been natural my whole life. What God gave me, what I sharpened up at the gym. Fuck all you motherfuckers talking shit, huh? Hating on me. Say it through my face, baby. Dime en la cara, cojones. Again? You guys coming again? Look at Juanqui's ready, bro. Damn, Juanqui. It could be good because of the size. Yeah. They might they just chop them long ball. We just gotta go short them. Chop them up. Chop them up. You guys ready? We got like 30 minutes of handball. We'll start picking it up now. And with the handball, that's our warm up, man. If you don't like it, fuck you. And if you're good at handball and you want to challenge the squad, put the money up, man. We've been doing this for many of years, taking on all comers. That girl that was just playing, that uh, insane athlete is a tennis player. She's going to get back in it later, but we have a lot of tennis players that come compete and challenge. So if you want this, some of this handball, you were the lord in the in the prison yard, you want you want this ass whooping, hit us up, man. Only for cash, so. Ah! Fuck! Ah! Uh, camel toe, please. Charlie! Charlie, those balls are big ass lips you have. <laughs> Take a guess, Charlie. Hey, you got a ball. Ah! Oh, He's intimidating. I think he did a bump. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you're doing bumps in the middle of the day? Ah! Ah! Johnny hasn't played with Charlie, are you trying to mimic Serena Williams? Yeah, we got you. We're getting free. Let's go. 
Why would I win? Why would I win? Why would I win? Why would I Come back. Five three. Come back. It's you. Get it, get it. That's me. Get it, get it, get it, get it. That's you. Five four. There's plenty of stories about me in the gym, about my work ethic, and it's not a lie. You know, you could ask any of my teammates or coaches, I love what I do, and I love to compete and win, so that means I have to be at the gym more than everybody else. I have to bust my butt, I have to wake up early, I have to run, I have to swim, I have to do all those things that I'm not comfortable doing, but through the process and the journey, I've gotten comfortable, and some would say I've become decent at doing those things, you know?
the end of the day, I just love it, man. I, I just love that. Boom, that physical contact, let's get after it. Who's more man? Let's get in that wrestling mat, wrestle for two hours. After that wrestling practice is done, I want to look around and everybody's on their hands and knees. And I still got some more in me left to go because it's, it's my mentality. I want to outwork everybody every day just by a little bit or by a lot, whatever it may be. So when fight day comes, not just from myself and my body, but I let everybody know, man, I'm a dog, man. We headed to Los New York to dominate, take over the city, give everything I got to shut the lights off of my opponent, make sure I execute him. I'm not going to no decisions with nobody. Those things don't go our way, so we don't go for decisions, man. We either kill or get killed. <laughs> My daughter. Peace out. I love you. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> this is the one. Minus to the fine. Well, I haven't seen this one. I saw the other one. It was nice. You know, we're rolling with good shit today. Good again? Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Dad's already nervous putting on seatbelts and shit. Just a plane. It goes really fast, really high. You gonna bring the dominoes? Oh man, I can't believe nobody got the dominoes. I can't we're gonna buy in there. As soon as we get to there, we're gonna buy the Oh, man. Oh, man. Here we go. You got Domino? Yeah. Brought to you by Bam. These people stand strong behind me. We've been talking for a while and they've been holding me down for a while. We hadn't told the public who was uh, behind me. So hard and it's these people right here, they're really repping us hard. They're really taking care of me. They set this up for us so the whole team can get there comfortably on the day that we want it and leave as well comfortably with the whole team together. Um, I'm kind of the type of person, if I'm eating, my whole squad's gonna eat, the whole crew's gonna eat. So if I'm in this private jet, everybody go, go with me. If not, I just take a recognized plane. So everybody with me, my coach, my pops, training partners, good friends of mine, we're ready, man. We're ready to do some damage to hurt people. Yeah. I got another one in my phone. I gotta go through that one too. This is it right here for the Latin Peaks. This is us. Three Peaks. With the soda. Huh? Don't fuck with it, man. Right, mm. mm. Don't fuck with us. No, they have no the choice. Mike. Mike, don't even. Take the line, take the line. Only me and you know, but everybody else has. Yeah. Green tea, everybody has. The purest of the purest. Miss Scott. Miss Scott Reposado. 
Who's not getting a shot back there? Inform me. Somebody saying no? Throw their asses off. Peer pressure, peer pressure. Peer pressure. Like, a like, a like a baby. You know I'm not saying you anything. Like a baby. No, no, just just no way. <laughs> hey, uh, everybody. Oh. Start of a great, great, great week. Here we go. Let's do it. Bottom wow. up. Victory. 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 Salud. Oh, look at this punk, man. After the fight, I'm taking a whole bottle of the face. I love this shit. No hangovers, too. That's why it's my favorite. It's a yeah. way, way better version of tequila. It's pretty much the same plan, but the way they make it, the way it's put together, it's fantastic. Bye-bye, Miami. We'll come back with a belt or dead. It's the only way to do it, baby. Putting in the breaded forms of protein and such that are act as a carbohydrate in a protein. And yes, I'm the first person to discover that or at least say it on public knowledge. So what I'm doing is I'm having the breaded french fries followed by the breaded chicken, which will later be turned into fuel. Well, mass for the how do you do it? I'm a fucking mutant. Man. Shit, baby. Shit, baby. <laughs> Been eating french fries and fucking other shit all day long. I love you, New York. Not the starch, right? <laughs> Dead ass. <laughs> the sauce is for nutritional value because it's green. So you know it's got vegetables in it and shit. I don't know which vegetables, but I know it's good for the blood and all types of things. I used to love a fight week when I'd go like to Asia, for example, where I wouldn't have to do too much media obligations. Maybe one day they had me sit in the room for two hours. I did a couple magazines or whatever it was and then just compete and be in that isolation be by myself that's always how i liked it i got more and more obligations now as i fight and um your boy keeps it real <laughs> i just fucking turn off the phones and tell everybody fuck you because when it's fight week it's my time to be greedy for some reason everybody in the mama wants to contact you during fight week and maybe it's not coming from a bad place or nothing but that that's the time for for you to be selfish because i i have a job to do on that particular week on that saturday i got a job to do and i just like to be all about myself, you know? I give my time to my kids, and then about after that, I just, I don't like to deal with, with nothing, you know? If somebody had a bad day, that's not the day to call me and vent to me because I'm, I'm focused on the task. My mind is only on my task. Everything that I do, I get, I get very lost in what I do. I can just think about the same thing over and over in a thousand different scenarios. So when it comes to fight week, I'm just in tune in another zone. I, I, I really, I don't want to meet new, no new people, for example. I, I just don't. I don't want to do nothing new. I want to stay in my hotel room, just doing what I do. Or if not, I'll go to a park and just isolate and see what I have to do in my mind. Things like that. I visualize a lot, you know. I'm a daydreamer always. So I'm just doing me on, on fight week. I don't want to deal with no people. Plus, you can't really eat too much. You know, you're kind of touchy already. Can't have sex, they say. So you know, the testosterone is bumping. Motherfuckers is mad. I just want to be me on fight week. You know, have my coach with me, my coaching staff, because they know how to handle me on fight week. They know how to give me my space and also how to get in my face. So it's just the perfect blend, you know, for me to be just by my damn self. You ready to do 100? Yeah. Standing? No, uh, sitting Sitting? Down. Yeah, sitting down, feeling the air. Let me stretch this thing. That's it. Huh? I'm just stretching. No fucking Chinese finger points, just stretching. Got it, but you don't have to release it always like that. Otherwise, there's no point. Stretching doesn't do it. It's like having a lower back fucking tie, you can tie it one. So why? It doesn't work that way. 200 or 100? 100, 150. Put it back a little more. Put it back a little more. One minute, one minute, one minute. Let me stretch like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna swan your shit. Come here, not allow me.
Eso y eso. Bueno, Pali, mira, nos salió la, nos salió la pinga ahí hasta allá, bro, porque tenía buena caminar. Yo le hice enseñar la califa. We're headed to get suits for everybody. And if I got it, my crew's got it. So everybody's getting a suit. Let's get the formalities and get right to these questions. Man. I'm trying to eat my brothers and spit these questions out. I got things to do. Let's go, man. Let go. Who next? Who's ready? Come on. Classes in session. How many people are in the line right now? One in front of the sign. Just you and me. Let's do this. Come on. Let's go. Spit them out. You're a real legit killer, man. Well, I'm gonna make a statement real quick before these questions get asked real quick. Is everybody is class in session? Is everybody listening? Sir, you're you're genius. You're nothing but genius, bro. From him just sneaking off to the right, yo, and then from like, yo, everything. I saw it all. Straight up. It's coast, bro. It's coast. Good luck, sir. If people start asking me. If I get one question about a so-and-so this or number 37 in the world, I will just hang up and go about my day. I don't want no questions regarding other people. I got a main event to take care of. The media's always asking me about so-and-so from another planet. I don't care. One chance only. So don't mess it up for your teammates and co-workers. Don't ask no stupid questions because the interview's over. I got shit to do. Let's go. We are in New York, New York, at Victor Moham's Custom Tailored Suits. The homie hooked me up exclusively with some great pieces that everybody saw in that press conference. And I got some more that I'm dropping. But I'm the type of dude that if I'm eating, so is the people that help me get there. If I'm taking care of all my squad, this ticket is on me. So Papa Dukes, my trainers, my longtime good friend and bodyguard, everybody getting suits and I'm hooking them all up. I'm excited just to see them get their things, man, you know? I love these guys, so if I'm shining, I want to see them shine. And I'm just excited to see what the fuck they're going to come out wearing. Who's going to get the ruffles, huh? Who's getting the ruffles edition 1970s tuxedo baby blue? The white ruffles, ready for prom. <laughs> Who's ready for prom? You heard that, who? Kobe Anderson. Keep watching my video. Yeah. Yeah. The press conference. Who? Uh, Friday. After the lane. Or before the lane. Nice t-shirt. This is the only way they can get attention. <laughs> That's what you should put. Having these bums come under and talk. People still ain't gonna tune into that shit. Those idiots can't even talk, man. One of them has his shit written up by some boy at ATT that works the front desk, lives at his parents' basement. The other one, I, I don't know, man, but he's an idiot. Man. Hey, Jorge, you're playing kind of tight, no? <laughs> no, man. Stop looking at my ass on you, fool. <laughs> it's not permitted in Belarus. Okay, oh, you have to be careful in New York. It's super shit. Yeah, New York, you have to be, yeah. to be careful, man. That's why I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> it looks like it was super shit. You too. Of course. You ready? All this way. You don't ask Andre that I'm fighting with yeah. <laughs> Victor, this is not the guy you can play. This is a wild tiger. <laughs> you leave that well, tiger I mean, I've seen him fight, so I mean, I know. Yeah, but he's like that always. You leave that I've tiger alone. Andre. Andre. You see nobody sitting next to him because we all know how he is. Right? <laughs> that Looks like a tiger. What? What? The, the message you sent is really I've always uh, for this been a firm model of uh, the same yeah. yeah. the man well, we're doing who makes the clothes, not the clothes, makes the clothes, not the clothes, just makes just the clothes. I can wear anyone. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make it look good. I, I just turned this into like a fashion thing if it makes camera. Yeah, I can go out like this to the club and start fashion statements. Uh, uh, uh. No, the best part is can't nobody tell me shit because what? Shit. Oh, shit.
Ahí me... No, vale, pesar de tan rápido, no mate. No. Tengo la rodilla mala, sí. ¿Por qué tú no andas con esa puesta? No, no, no la pongo. ¿Por qué? Solo cuando voy a patear. ¿La coña? No, es que es. <risa> hey, surprise, es mío. Hey, Everything you ever done for me. Thank you for that. I'm a big dude. That's a strong dude. Let's go, go. Nine to the south. Let's go for the championship. Grab him, grab him. Just grab him. Come on. You gotta take a bump. Whoa, whoa! Look at Hanzo. Oh shit! This guy is just. We knew this was gonna happen. We knew this was gonna happen. same thing that's damaged us, turn the off button on them, make them short circuit. It's really for me and my family, my legacy, and the only way to separate myself from the pack is to send these people to another dimension, you know, there's only one way to do that. I'm there to hurt every second of every minute, every minute of the round. And if he survives what I got to give him, my hat's off to him, 
you know, but th there's a dog here, and when this dog gets tired, it's only gonna keep biting me. I'm not gonna take a step back from nobody. There's not a fight you can pull up where me getting hit or me getting tired, I'm backing away or shying away from a fight. I'm a dog, and once that cage is locked, I only know one thing, one speed, you know? Jorge Masvidal is back ahead of this weekend. The huge fight, UFC 244 versus Nate Diaz. You guys are both heavy volume strikers. What kind of fight are you expecting? A violent fight. Okay, we're going to take over New York City, all right? Me and you. You ready? You better bring your mouthpiece, man. I thought you got you one for me. I do got one for you, but just in case they don't fit, bring one anyways. Whether no matter what your political views on them, it's not every fighter that could say, hey, the president's showing up to my fight, mm -hmm. you know? So that's humbling and stuff. Especially when other fighters out there trying so hard, hey, Mr. President, look at me. The president won't even go to the fights, look at them or acknowledge them. Yeah. My specialty, what God gave me my abilities in the striking, what people want to see is the pure violence. Nobody wants to see guys hugging and sniffing crotches. We want to see, want to see that brutality. So that's what I bring into the sport, you know? I do. Raise your hand. I brought some gloves. We're going to do body blows only. When that anxiety hits it, I just got that rage of energy and I, and I might not have a face to punch. That's I, I got to eat to calm down, you know? Okay, well, I mean, it's, it seems like a... No, I've already been fed. The tiger's been fed. You're good, man. Okay, good. Well, hey, what, you said that you're not a West Coast gangster, you're a Miami dude. What's the difference between the two? You're going to find out Saturday, my brother. Some stand, some make a tight ball, you know? I owe you Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Mike is the one that probably had punched me the most. Oh, come in. Oh, Mike, you fucking ass. I still remember the day that my eyes just like kind of, you know, watery. I good on the nose. It was Mike. I don't remember. I don't remember that. I still remember. It was. You don't remember. You remember the first time we went on the ground, though? MMA gloves, the board put us together. You tapped me like five <laughs> times in one minute. Oh, remember Mike, Luis? Oh, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, you remember Mike, Luis? Body shot? Body shot? Really? Then those I don't remember this. this Mike, awesome. man. I'm happy about <laughs> that. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> tapping a lot, dude. This is great. <laughs> remember, I remember we were men uh, down inside. We were yeah, down inside. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how it's today, but it was a tough train. At least yeah, for me. Very tough. Very tough. No, for you, no, but you're tapping everybody. You're like, pop, pop, pop. Sweep, pop, sweep. Pop, pop, tap, tap. Big guys, little guys didn't matter. <laughs> that was the worst part. All the big guys were yeah, yeah. No, no weight class didn't matter. Ulam de I'm going to be cheering. All right. You going? No, I'm going to be cheering for you. Okay. A lot. A lot. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night, Good night. Thank if you, you guys know. get your water, I'll, I'll do this. Thank, thank you so you much. much. Oh, thank you. you. You've never rolled with anybody yeah. like that in your life. I rolled a coco the other day, but he whooped my ass. Coco's a beast, man. Yeah, yeah, man. 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 But this guy is on yeah. his own planet, bro. I've never felt that in my life, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> He's got the crazy sweeps. Yeah. He used to have this move where yeah. you'd be hitting goes through the sweep and when you like post uh -huh. like that, uh -huh. he'd just trip your this shelf. bro yeah. like Ooh. this. Was and it was song. everybody. Everybody yeah. already knew like it's his one, two, three. Go go it was his three piece yeah. and a soda, bro. It was just whoop, yeah. whoop. Dance, perfect. One of the best guillotines I felt too is him. The baby guillotine and this. No, it's from high elbow. Oh my gosh, that high elbow. <laughs> to the sweep, to the arm lock, and then, and then the arm drag, of course, which is in the top. We're doing the Karate National Championships today. Held that, the greatest fucking grappler in the world's Cobra academy. Kai. Okay, you can represent Cobra Kai because you look like this. <laughs> Number one oh, so seed. must be legit. N number That's one Johnny, seed, bro. Johnny. Johnny. Johnny Lawrence. Everybody loves Johnny. You're not Johnny Lawrence. You gotta pull, you have to pull back, but you have to land. It's leg, you hit the shoulder. It's the ultimate control. It's the ultimate control. We've been watching a lot of high level guys. And we've been kind of getting into it because we like those outside, outside attacks, so I'm stealing that. Me and Mike are hyped because we've been seeing some high level karate, so we're gonna execute some of those moves. 
and we get to entertain game bread, so that's always the best part. Pre decapitation, pre decapitation. Right before the head comes off is when you stop. It's no Charlie. I'm not going against Charlie. He's too loud. The ball. The ball through. I got Charlie. We got Mike Brown. For I got. I think I'm, we're the same height. We're, we're yeah, good, man. Height. That's a good both, matchup. Both uh, backgrounds is grappling. Yeah, you first know, first well, like Mike this. said he's at a we're we're better. We don't yeah, want to. Mike's a grappler. Better than the ball. If we go with the ball. We might no, the ball. We're, we're gonna save him for hands off. Or the number one seed. That's dangerous. He's gonna hurt somebody and his own. Yeah. How do you match up first, please? How do you match? Advancing to the next round. On your knees, please. <laughs> Anthony Charlie, come on, Charlie. Hora sin cabajo, Come on, come on. Weight cut at 170 is I'm I'm pretty disciplined at 170. I was I was extra disciplined at 55 with a fight. 
Once I was in camp, I'd, I'd be pretty disciplined. If I didn't have a fight, a pig, you know, because I'm a fat boy at heart. So the weight cut at 55 was tough. Even the times when, you know, as I got older and I started seeing even off season, I can't take off. And I would stay more or less on a decent diet off season than a strict diet on season. The weight cut was crazy for me, man. It was a lot of water. I didn't enjoy the process, but it did make me who I am. It made me tougher because I would used to run a desert and then go scrap with people. I don't have to run that desert no more. I just got to scrap. So I, I give up weight now, but I don't mind it. You know, there's not too many people that have done the weight cut that I've done as far as water wise goes and still be able to go out there and perform. Never miss weight. Proud of that. It was, a, it was a learning experience for me. Now that I'm at 70, maybe I'm not the biggest 70. Maybe I'd be more fitting at a, at a smaller weight class, like a 161, 162 pounds. But I love it, man. I, I got the speed over everybody. I still got enough pop as well because I could keep that speed coming for numerous rounds that it doesn't matter to me. If they are naturally strong in the beginning, I'm gonna fade them out. I'm a dog. I'm gonna keep coming and coming and coming until I break them. So the weight cut at 170 is pretty chill. I'm pretty, once I'm on camp, I'm pretty strict with my weight, what I eat, what I don't eat. Um, and basically my diet is a seafood diet. I just, whatever I see, I eat. So it sounds like I'm not strict, but I, I try to just eat clean. And if I'm hungry, I just go with it. You know, if there's steak there and I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat all the steak, I'm full, I'm done eating. You know, that's kind of how I am. I don't put uh, as much junk food as I used to. For those that know me, my real fans from Miami Hustle days and such. But I still get down on some French fries and burgers from places I shouldn't be at because I got a little bit of money and I could afford better, but nah, I don't change, you know? So every once in a while, I fuck up and I just put my running shoes on, go run it off like I've always done, you know? Thank you, thank you. Are you ready, New York City? BMF title to determine who is going to be the baddest man on the planet. It's such an honor to be able to place this title around the waist of the winner, Jorge Masvidal. Whether it's Jorge, whether it's damn Rock, I love this motherfucker. He just straight up said Jorge Masvidal's winning. Right there, yo. <laughs> Salute. I can't believe, man. He's straight up. So I'm proud to say that myself and Seven Bucks Productions gonna make a film about the life of one of your founding fathers. The Smashing Machine, Mark Kerr. Wow, that's interesting. Wow, that's, that's, that's good. Mark, The Smashing Machine, Kerr. Wow, oh, okay. Well, yeah, he'd be an awesome him, Mark, Mark Kerr to play. He'll yeah. play Mark Awesome amazing. Okay, Mark Kerr. Everybody's hyped. Watch <laughs> me that. I thought you had one for me. <laughs> yeah, you gotta what? hear. You gotta hear. Yeah, yeah, man. You saw this are, are you from? Come on, let's go. Right here. Look tough, man. Look Yo. tough. No, man. We can't do pictures like that. Fight time. Hands behind Yo, back. Yo, fight time. Hand behind back. Yep. And, and no smiling when you get up there. They might think it's soft. Smile. I ain't smiling. No smile. I ain't smiling ever again. I just smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Let's go, brother. Like that, huh? Oh my god, that was so <laughs> fun being up there and see that. <laughs> so proud of you, man. Oh, that I don't know if I want to wish you good luck, man. No, they're taking me out because I gotta go. It's your fight, I'm on. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow after the fight. All right, buddy. I love you. Good luck, all right? Yes, all right. Thank you for coming out, man. Yeah, man. We got you, man. Got Tell you. Dan I said, what's up, man? Right, well, let's go. Land of the Knicks there. <laughs> yeah, so you got and Oh, and shit. Then, oh, shit. <laughs> That's great, George. You guys would be upset if you saw me with a basketball ball. <laughs> great, man. You look fucking stupid.
Yeah, yeah, this one I think you're really gonna like. Uh, I'll see. When you see oh, this is engraved, I don't know if you can read it in this light. But it's a, you know, a, 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 a ticket from Tiffany's. And uh, it's got, it's got be, it's customized for, uh, you know, Rule 305 on there, super necessary on it. Damn, you guys didn't have to, man. No, yes, we did. Yes, we did, man. Wow, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all good, man. All good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. And, uh, if you don't need to see you this quick signature on this, it's great. Awesome. That's awesome. perfect. Yeah. Just do this with their line. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. You have me here waiting for what? Yeah, yeah. I got to just keep reminding myself it's just a fight, you know. MSG, the people that own this building just gave me this jersey. How cool is that? I can't play no basketball. I shouldn't have my jersey. Man. This is crazy. No, you earned that jersey. I mean, my favorite fighter ever. <laughs> no, no, no hay forma que yo pierda. Si me dan un tiro en la pierna antes de esa ley, yo todavía lo gano. No hay forma que yo pierda enfrente de tú. No hay forma. Pero si tú vas a hacer una cosa, no me dije de ti. Te va a venir acá. Te va a venir acá. La mujer se le ve en la cara. Sí, sí, sí. sí. ¿Me entiendes? Ya yo, ya yo lo estudié. Y vea lo que es con confianza. Vea lo que es con confianza. This guy, man. What does what does it mean to you to have him in New York City with you about to go down tomorrow night? This is the only time you're ever gonna see me fanboy like this, <laughs> man. I, I can't believe this guy's here still, man. This has been an inspiration to me since I was a fucking kid. I literally been saying, man. And I've said it like in every interview that I've ever been asked if the media is paying attention. I've always mentioned this individual is my favorite fighter of all time. And still to this day, I still watch highlights of him, fights of him, his fights with Sugar Ray Leonard, his fights with David Moore when he came up to 168 pounds and nobody thought he was going to win and he knocked those guys out. So a huge fan of this guy, man. Colby Covington said that, how much attention do you place on these types of comments? Where are you guys at? Where's all the media at? Who's, who's headlining MSG? Who's the president coming to see? Who's Roberto Duran coming to see? <laughs> <laughs> who's The Rock coming to place the belt on? I want him getting sick. Okay, let's go to eight pen. Follow me. Let's go. Fight day. Mm. It's a lot of anxiety in a way because you just want to scrap. You got all these obligations still. You know. Everybody wants to talk to you that day as well and give you some type of advice. And really, if you're, if you're a fan of mine and you do have access to me or a friend of mine, you do have access, I've done this rodeo more than you. Keep, keep it to yourself, man, because everybody has input and, and advice. And it's like the day that you want to be the most alone, and it's the day that everybody's hounding you from everything. So that's why I'd be shutting off the phone. I, I got a task in mind already. I, I know what to do, and the only ones that tell me what to do, less or more, is my coaches. You know, so I, I just don't like it that everywhere you go, somebody will have a piece of advice to give you. I know it's not coming from a bad place, but a lot of, you know, chefs in the kitchen might mess up the recipe. So I, I, I don't like that, you know. I like to be alone on fight day, and it's just a, a lot of anxiety building till I get in the cage, because I have to be in the locker room for four hours. <laughs> I'm not really heard about the gold kitchen match. I love you. Hey, hey, that's the bottom. 11.30, baby. Thank you. I love you, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you get in the cage, you got these introductions that are like, to me, they feel like forever. You know, I just want to go, like, all right, ready, set, go. And it still hasn't happened. It's not to that moment where the referee comes in and says, you, are you ready? Are you ready that I'm happy now? Now the, now I'm in my place, the fish is in the water. I'm finally, all right, let's do this because all this, this training camp, the fight week, fight day, I've been waiting for this moment. And the anxiety gets to me sometimes where I just wanna go. But once it happens, once, that's when that leaves and then you're, you're, you're in your element. I'm in my element, I'm having fun, I'm just, 
letting the hands fly, punches are coming at me, and I still feel like a kid where when they're whizzing by me, I'm just enjoying that moment so much. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's hard to describe. I wish I had a better, better vocabulary, but it's been my favorite adrenaline ride, my favorite drug, my, my favorite everything that I've ever tasted is fighting, you know? It's so pure, so real, so animalistic, so spiritual, so many different things, you know? If you haven't gotten into a fist fight, I recommend it, you know? But in a safe environment, don't go out there and start fights in the street and get your head cracked or something. You'll do it in a safe environment. You got it Your Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything you've given us. We thank you, we love you. You come here today for victory. We ask you to bless us, the coaches, our boy Jorge. Keep him safe, keep him fast, keep him strong. We raise our hands to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Are you happy with what you did out there and how the fight ended? My body of work throughout each round was going according to plan. We were setting up things every round for the next round, and uh, I was digging to the body, and that's one thing. I, I just want to beat somebody's ass, man. I don't want nobody to stop them until I stop them and incapacitate them, so we could definitely do the rematch. I don't know if the UFC's open to it, but I'm definitely open to it, you know? Hey, brother. <laughs> do your thing. Act like you took a picture with a winner before Daniel. Steven! Come on, Mark, you're right. Come Thank you. I just grabbed my ass. Of course, brother, I got you. Sorry they didn't let me uh, get a little more vitamin, but it was coming. No, but it was going to send him up. We were sending him up. Save coming. Save him. Had those body shots working already. Yes. The next yeah. was gonna go up high, very fast. Yeah. You look great out there, brother. Thank you, my brother. Okay. Okay. Just come right up here, gentlemen. Yeah. Again, I don't know if you know this, but Nate Diaz is very upset at The Rock. You know, he feels like Rock was siding with you, and he said he can get it too, and that Mike Tyson should have been the one to do that in hindsight. The Rock is not allowed to pick favorites or who he likes. I'm sucks. just saying. I like The Rock is one of my favorite action stars when I'm watching movies. Is Tom Cruise gonna come beat me up or something? He just feels like he was siding with you and he wasn't well, why not? impartial. He's from Miami and I'm a bad mother, you know what I'm saying? He didn't think Nate was that bad of a mother ever, I don't know. Yeah, my lord. <laughs> you, Hi, I'm Nate from Miami. Come and say hello, man. This is my boy, my brother in law's boy. Right. He's from Miami, Miami too. Yeah, you and boy. Time, man. Congratulations, brother. Both Flynn, my another Miami boy. We all got another Miami boy. Good pleasure, man. Congrats. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about those. Yeah. Brad Slater. How you doing, Brad? Pleasure, man. Good. Yeah. And there's Brian. He's <laughs> a <laughs> big fan. All Miami boys? Yeah. We get a photo. Of course, you're a group shot coach. Is that from Miami? Yeah. Yeah, we're throwing up 305. Yeah. yeah. This is for Miami natives only. Yeah. Dude. Got it, Brian. Got it. You're West Palm Beach, Sam. Right. <laughs> Thank you, man. The Miami side. Come on. Come on. Right. Enjoy this win. You gotta go to the next one. I'm there for you. We'll find you. you I'm there. You won't have to find me. Huh? I'm there for you. Yes, sir. I'll eat you out. I'll eat you up on the side. Yes, sir. You know what? Okay. Give me my seat. I'm gonna take my microphone. Why you mad? Why you mad? Why you mad? Why you you mad? Why 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 Conor McGregor has said that he is going to come back January 18th. The opponent Dana Come, White said, "Come back to what? 
to MMA, to the UFC. What do you mean, like fighting in the cage? Yeah. If he fights and gets a victory, and he wants this, and some of you motherfuckers are mean, man, because you know what the fuck I'll do to that little dude, bro. I'll fuck that little guy up, man. He's a fucking midget. Dana White, president of this motherfucking company, said I'm too much man for him. I get it why people want to see him hurt for the stunts he's been pulling, but he don't want this shit. He's just talking so he can get his name out there. He was he was cheering for Nate. He wanted to run it back with Nate. You think he's at home seeing that fight saying, I want to fight that dude? That dude ain't retarded. You see, he punches old people in the face because those are fights that he could win. He don't want this shit. I heard a lot of comments. I read a lot of media stuff. People talking about the label of white gold is the type of ground and shit situations that I beat out work in our class. And I had one. I want someone to pull the fight that I faded that in the fourth and fifth round. That's not going to happen. What happened in the third was just like what happened in the fourth. And in the fifth, I haven't eaten either, so. I'll have a good pizza. Fuck yeah. Round of applause for the gentleman. Who is this guy? <laughs> and great dude just handing out pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Questions for me today? Bro, I'm in Zoe. You're tired. Yo, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> this dude. No, I got a kid now. I got a kid now. I got two of them. Who's, who's watching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to get the biggest checks possible, but Nate is in the in the future for a fact. You know, we're doing it next year, the year after that, but it's gonna happen. I got a lot of things to do in my in my book before I close it off. Before I close this chapter, and move on to the next in my life. I'm pointing in the right direction. I'm, I'm getting out these pages filled out. If I get fired of the year, now I can give a fuck less. But my own personal goals and stuff, I, I will have them met before this career of mine is done. I got about three to four more years for you guys to enjoy this violence, so tune in.